Hello, Kansas City and KUAW listeners. This is Professor Smooth Jazz from the KUAW Smooth Jazz Radio Show. You can catch me every Thursday, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., 9 p.m. to 10 p.m., and Friday, 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. Today, we are with contemporary jazz gospel pianist for a KUAW interview, Robert Crawford. Robert, how are you doing today? Thank you for taking the time to uh, let us interview you. I'm great. Thanks for having me, Rick. And so I'm looking here, as I checked your web page, saying you were born, let's see here, Arkansas, yes, Arkansas, okay, okay, Arkansas, how could I forget that, I've only been to Arkansas a couple of times, and uh, driving up in those mountains there, boy, I'm telling you, I was like, well, I better stay alert. Really, especially at nighttime. <laughs> I, I said, if I ever go there, if I ever go there, I better make sure I got plenty of sleep. <laughs> especially at nighttime. Yeah, definitely. I think we went there from the Ozarks or something like that. So you grew up, you 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 grew up there uh, your entire life. No, I left there when I was four years old, and I've been in Cleveland, Ohio, ever since. Oh, uh, okay. You've been in Cleveland. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because I'm going to ask you something about the, the Indians. I, I do remember I did take that note. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because you wrote down here in order. What was that? God, family, music, and sports. That's and right. then you wrote something that's down there about the Indians and the tribe and the Browns. The Browns, the Indians, and the Cavs. Yeah, and the Cavs. <laughs> so, hey, but uh, Robert, so... I think I think I had uh, before. I'm. Um, I got some music from your promoter, Adam. I had a. I had a couple of no. I had a CD of yours before that because I know I looked. I said, "Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember you. Yeah, yeah." And so, when did you start your music career? And uh, did you always want to play instruments? I started playing in high school. I started playing trumpet at first. But okay. um, I had to sit out a year because they didn't have any instruments for me to play. So mm -hmm. I came home one day from school and my brother was playing piano and he was really playing it. So I was like, I want to do that. And I, so I started probably around when I was 18 years old, something in there. So you grew up in a musical family? Well, all my brother, well, I have two older brothers and they mm -hmm. played. And we had a little group, you know how we do it. We had a family group. You know, we okay. played the instruments and the other people sang. Okay. Now, so did this, uh, you, I know you played, it says you played in what, high school? In junior yeah. high? That's when yeah. you started? So did you also, what about in church? Did you also? All the time. Church is what I'm about. Oh, okay, that was another place you could really showcase your talents. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, that's how you do it. That's where you learn. Church musicians make the best. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's if they find, the, like at our church, some of the little young fellas, man, as soon as they find out they know how to play, hey, let's put them up there, man. You... <laughs> yeah. So were you nervous? What, what, your first experience, what, what age were you playing? At, uh, did you get a chance to play it? to show you, showcase your talents in church? Well, I probably didn't start playing in church till maybe around 23, 24, something okay. in there. Mm -hmm. Because I, I really okay. wasn't that now, good. Okay, now, how did you get to uh, the contemporary jazz? Or what, you know, what did you start out playing when you first started? Well, like you said, I started in church, but, um. You know, after a little while, I started playing in clubs, you know, started doing jazz in clubs. Mm -hmm. So where'd you get the jazz influence? Well, I played with a, a, a saxophone player and he needed a keyboard player. So they were doing jazz and we started making money doing jazz. So that's mm -hmm. where I got it. Mm -hmm. Now, where'd you, so where'd you meet the saxophone player? Did y'all grow up together or something like that? Or? 
No, we didn't really grow up together. I went to a club one day and he was playing and the band he was playing with, they really sounded good. So after they finished their set, I went and said, man, I want to do that. You know, I mm -hmm. want, how, how can I do it? So mm -hmm. it just worked out that way that one day he needed a keyboard player and I was right there waiting. Mm -hmm. Now, were you what you call uh, a musician that kind of pick up the music as you hear it or were the lessons that kind of brought you along? Well, I play um, piano by ear. I read music. I read music, but um, I learned how to read music and my theory was through playing trumpet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're in two different keys. Trumpet is in B flat and oh, piano okay. is in the key of C. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, I see that uh, that you started touring with uh, Gerald Levert and and Eddie, is his father Eddie? Well, we were all on tour together and they're um, with the OJs, their keyboard player, their utility keyboard player was having a baby. So I had to step in while we were on tour. We were on tour for like three months and it was the OJs, um, Gerald Levert and the Whispers. Oh, okay. So yeah, you playing with the Man, a lot of people in Kansas City, Gerald Albright and the Whispers, man. I remember seeing them at the concerts here. Yeah. So, uh, and man, Mr. Walker, he has a uh, R and B, uh, old school R and B show. Scatter, yeah, that's the Scatter DJ Scatter. See, so man, he he has the Whispers going on. Sometimes when I'm in the studio, man, he got the Whispers and the OJ's going on. That's music. That's music. Okay, so well, tell us about your first CD project. Because that now was that jazz your first CD? It was because I don't remember. It was called Don't Stop. Was that the first one? No, that's my current CD right now. Oh that, no, that's your current. Okay, yeah, your current and your first was uh, Hands to Head to Hearts. Hit that's right. Right from from Hands to Hearts. That was my first CD in about 2008. And, um, you know, I was learning the trade and I was going through some things in my life. So that CD, I'm proud of it and everything, but, you know, I don't think that was my best work because I had to complete it before I really was really finished completing it. But then in 2017, I made Almost Home and that was a real come up. Yeah, and actually that's the one that I remember uh, spending some tunes from because I I had uh, looked in the computer and said, oh yeah, I remember. I said, Robert Crawford seemed like I remember that name. And I went to check. Yeah, because, uh, so how did you how did you meet Adam? Well, I was looking for a promoter and another guy from Cleveland um, was using Adam. So I gave Adam a call and, you know, we've been like that ever since. Oh, okay. Yes. Now, Let's talk about that new project. Uh, well, the that's the one. Don't stop. And so your single that you have is uh, was back. Was it back from the eighties or something? Back uh, so, to so, the eighties. Yes. Yeah. So so tell me how that came about. What the CD or the single? The single. Well, you know. And um, the title, you know. Well, the the title is like I use I use drum machines or whatever, and the um title on the drum machine was Back to the Eighties. So I just mm -hmm. said we'll name the song Back to the Eighties. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, you know I I graduated in seventy two, so a lot of I have a lot of music listening experiences and influences because man, there was. And on a black radio station, we didn't have a lot of black radio stations. So they played all types of music, the jazz, they had to play everything because we just didn't have a jazz station. We just, you know, just wasn't an R&B station, just wasn't a gospel station. We had a gospel station, but still they had to play all the, if you wanted to hear your black music, you listen to that radio station and you catch everything. You know, and even on Sundays they'd have a, uh, a, a you know, church gospel, you 
no music going. Yeah, that's the way it is here right now. We don't even have a jazz station anymore. Mm hmm Now, uh, and, and this current CD is available on all digital outlets. Yes, it is. Anyone on Spotify, you know, CD Baby, um, Distro Kid, wherever you go, mm -hmm. Amazon, wherever you can buy digital music. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I see here that uh, that besides your musical career in Cleveland, Ohio, your minister of music at Mount Haven Baptist Church, uh, you and your wife, you lead the praise and worship service. Well, we, we've moved on from that, but, but I am the minister of music at a church called Central Bible Baptist Church. Okay. And, you know, me and my wife, we like to do it together, you know. Okay. Yeah, so you, you, Mr. Walker here, he's a, Mr. Walker here, he's a deacon and, and does a lot of things at his church. Now me, I'm just a Sunday school teacher and a, and, and just drive the church bus. That's all I do. Man. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. We need it all. <laughs> man, I, I'm trying to remember. I've been driving. Let's see. I just turned 67. Well, I didn't drive, you know, because of the COVID and not driving this last year. But I think I started driving when I was 30. No, 28. I, yeah, I've been a bus wow. driver since I've been. 28. I think I started teaching Sunday school around 32, so I, well, 30 something years, huh? <laughs> All of that in the same place? Yes, sir. Uh, Metropolitan uh, Missionary Baptist Church. They are really blessed to have you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so now you you still have the same sax player you uh, currently playing with in your band, Russell Thompson. Thompson. Right. That's the only sax player I use. He. He just the only sex. Drugs, <laughs> uh, Boney James, you name it. Russell Thompson mm -hmm. can go with him toe to toe. Oh, okay. So where'd you where'd you happen to meet Russell? That's where I met him at. I met him at um uh I met him at a um club. Okay, the club. Okay. Oh, that's oh that's the same one you all oh, same one you still be playing with. Yeah, oh, okay. we've been together for okay. about thirty three years. Something in there. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, and I, I took a note of this about this order. It said God, family, music, and sports. Now, we, we, it, let me tell you about my little story about the Indians. Now, it was when it had to be near the 90s or 80s. Well, what happened was I used to collect baseball cards, right? So most people, and, and so I remember Albert Bell was on the team. But his real name, see, he, he, his name was Joey Bell, but he changed it to Albert. That, you better not but go he with that you want to get in some trouble. Yeah, yeah, so he changed it. He had a little trouble, so he changed it to Albert Bell. But I knew because when I, when I went to go get a baseball card, nobody knew who I was talking about. So I kind of looked at this card and, that I had or something, and I said, oh, he changed his name. Oh, that's what it is. But what happened, I was – telling these guys about the Cleveland Indians, man, they're going to win the world. Series. And they were just, man, you don't know what you're talking about. I was naming all the players, but I think what happened, there was a boating accident and three of their starting pitchers, did they all, I think that, did they all get, they, uh, all, they all died, lost right? their life or something like that? Yes. yes. So then I was telling them, I'm saying, but next year, watch next year. And then they just, oh man, you don't know what you're talking about. So what was it? The the year after that, or the they went to the playoffs and the, and they, didn't they win the World? We we didn't win a World Series. Yet. You, you went to the playoffs, right? Oh, we went to the playoffs. We've been to the World Series too. Oh yeah, yeah, you went to the yeah, that's right, that's right. But so so it was oh man, how'd you know that? They, you know they were. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the Browns are looking pretty good this year. Yeah, I know, because that's what was worrying me. I said, man, they picked up some – they picked up some uh, – their they defense picked up. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah, I, so, I know you, did, you watched that Kansas City playoff game with the Browns, right? Yeah, yeah, that's why I was getting kind of worried. I said, man, you know, we used to just kind of, you know, while we're going to Cleveland, we ain't got nothing to worry about. I said, man, they, they start picking up some players. 
We should have beat y'all last year. We should have beat y'all. <laughs> Man, Mr. 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 Walker. You didn't even see it like that. I said, I said, now, Mr. Walker, he done tuned us out. Now you're talking about beating the Chiefs now. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, he said, oh, no, we, 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 we don't want to talk about it. I'm go. I got something else to do here while they talk. I oh, mean, oh, you can't be talking about beating the Chiefs. This is Chiefs country around here. Well, you know, we opening up against the Chiefs. That's our first game. Oh, okay. Yeah, because they were telling me that, uh, talking about the ticket prices, and so uh, – and, and I'm in the Kansas City area, so Mr. Walker said, "Oh yeah, yeah, you get to be the first, get the first choice, you know." But they told me they said, "Oh yeah, some people at work were telling me about it. Oh man, you know how much the tickets, the t- tickets cost the, for the opening game, and they said they're going too." Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. so yeah so tell me about this new CD you got going here, and what else can we expect from after your your hot new single there? Well. I really like this whole CD. I think that is a needle dropper. You know, I might be a little bit biased, but um, um, I don't know what Adam has planned for me next, which single he wants to do next. But mm-hmm. like I said, I think all of the songs are pretty listenable to. You can listen to pretty much everything. Mm-hmm. So where do you, when you go into the studio, are you starting to... Uh, select and figure out what you're going to write, what the music's going to sound like. So what all goes into this? Well, you know, I never really try to write a song, but Mm -hmm. whenever I say that I'm going to do an album or whatever, you know, the music just comes to me. You know, sometimes I'm at church and I hear something, I'll, you know, in between preaching or whatever, something will come to me. I mm-hmm. get a drum beat in my head, and then I put a melody to the drum beat. But for me, it all starts with the drum beat. Mm-hmm. Once I get, I go from there. Once I get the drum beat, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, this CD is it already available? Not, not the whole. Or are you still CD working? No, I'm sorry. The, um, I'm, I'm finished with the CD right now. Okay. Right now, Adam just wants to do singles for right now. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what the next single will be, mm-hmm. but the CD is done. Okay. Okay. And so, so when was that? I can send it to you. Okay. And so when was that release available? Well, I don't know yet. I don't know. I'm, okay. I'm, no, I'm talking about, oh, you said this. Oh, the CD's done, but you haven't. I was just saying if you go to Amazon or something. Did you right, uh right no it's it's not available like that yet okay but like i said i can get it to you oh okay okay yeah but you don't have uh what do you call a uh projected date where you say well this is going right, to be available right, right. oh I leave, okay, that up, okay. I leave that up to the promoters okay and so how long usually how long does it take you to uh to complete all your selections like the the cd you had before this one was it almost home? Was that it? Was that the one? Right, it was almost yeah. home. Yeah. I started with that one. I was done. I started in 2016, maybe around June, and I was mm-hmm. done. And it was out in 2017. This one right here, I I um I was loving almost home so much I got I got caught up into listening to almost home. But I, I started this one uh, maybe around 2019, and then we had the we had COVID and I was pretty much done with it. COVID just gave me a, um, a lot of time to write. Mm-hmm. So I was finished real soon after the COVID. After March, I'm, I'd say maybe around May, I was done. Mm-hmm. Okay. And usually I would say take a good maybe nine months to do, you know, a whole mm-hmm. CD. Mm-hmm. So how's COVID affected your music career that you plan on doing touring and things man COVID it really slowed everything down it's opening back up right now so when it opens up we'll see you know right now you know club owners and promoters or whatever they will they're really scared because you know they can only have so many people in a venue or whatever Mm -hmm. so you know things are opening back up so I'm just hoping for the best Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it appears that 
there's a lot of new music, great new music coming out. So I don't know if it's because everybody's kind of sheltered in, maybe spending more time in the studio. But man, I mean, it's just uh, for my playlist. A lot of times on uh, my morning show, uh, let's see, it's Friday, which will be tomorrow morning. Man, I usually do 25 to 26 selections. And usually I have to, I can't play all of them. I have to wait till the next week because, man, I have so much new music. And I'm not talking about one. Before, maybe one or two selections, I just, oh, man, I'm talking, sometimes I got five, six, seven, eight selections that I can't get in on the, on the two hour time that I have. So I have to wait until the next week. And it looks like it kind of slowed down a little, but man, right after January, man, it just, whew, I'm telling you. I, I really believe it's due to COVID because what else do we have to do, man? We, you know, wake up, go to sleep, eat, watch TV, do music, mm -hmm. go to sleep. Mm -hmm. It's like Groundhog mm -hmm. Day, kept doing the same thing every day. Oh, over yeah, over. yeah, 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 but, you know, you got my prayers and everything, and well, I haven't, I usually would go to the venues, take pictures with the artists, things like that. Man, I haven't been, <laughs> my, I, my camera probably need batteries in it. <laughs> I haven't used it in such a long time. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Everything was dry. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. opening up again, though. Yeah. And then how do you feel about, even though when it does open up, you know, and being a Christian and having faith and you know, Jesus, knowing that God's in control of everything, but, you know, you still have to follow guidelines and watch for your, for your, for your own self and your health, you know, I mean, our bodies are, nothing's guaranteed, you know, we're human and our bodies are susceptible. And so we still have to take precautions. You can pray. Yeah, we, we pray, but we still doctors are there for to help us you know to help us stay healthy you know and we gotta uh eat right and try to get our rest and you know because our this is a vessel our bodies <laughs> well i still be, i still will be wearing my mask yeah that's what I, <laughs> I, I i i was thinking i said maybe i need to i think i need to go get some more because you know i just started my little I'm semi-retired, so uh, after school program, so I'm, I was thinking, I said, man, I have to, I, I went to the store and I was like, man, they don't, they, they, they kind of out of mass, I'm going to have to come back again because I want to keep plenty on hand, you know, and then I try to keep some in my bag, keep one in the car, because just in case I forget. I carry them in all my cars, everything, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going in the venue without it. Yeah, yeah, because sometimes I have it sitting, I'll sit right near the door, and I'll say, man, where's my mask? I'll say, oh, now since I have to get in my reserve, I got to make sure I replace it. That's right. I got a lot of them, too. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost like, don't go home, what was that commercial, don't go home without it, that that card or something like that, I can't remember, insurance or whatever it was. Right, it's like, don't leave home without it. Yeah, don't, don't, don't leave home without it, just in case. I have a couple of extra ones on hand. That's right. Uh, so is there any other thing that you would like to tell the listening audience? And then I want you to leave your info where you, they can look and see where you can be reached or any new news or information uh, for your websites. Well, I want to thank you guys for having me. I want to thank you for playing my music. Hope mm -hmm. you like it. And I want to thank everybody that's with KUAW that was a part of this interview. All the all the um, listeners for listening in, for calling in, you know, support jazz music, support music because that's what it's all about. You know, you can reach me at Robert Crawford Music. That's my Instagram. Or you can go to my website, keyedupproductions.com. I'm easy to reach. All my info is on both of them. Okay, well, thank you for taking the time out. Man, I know how sometimes we started out a little earlier and we trying to make sure we make the connections and everything. So uh, prayers for you and your family. But uh, when that game starts, uh, 
Whatever it starts, I'm gonna be praying for the Chiefs to win. <laughs> well, I'm gonna be thinking about you, Rick, when it happens, because I think we got something for you guys this year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, well, thanks again, and you take it easy and prayers. Same looking to you, forward man. to that. Looking forward to whenever that when you release that CD and everything too. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. And, and, and I'm gonna have to thank Adam for help. Thanking Adam for helping me set everything up, get everything, you know, go, I appreciate going. It. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. So okay. Okay. Bye-bye.